Can you win it back so we can get our Fox in the Box finishing going? Yeah, and we're just going to call this activity Space Invaders. This session is designed to give our young players lots of opportunities to practice their finishing techniques in and around the penalty area. And then using the space so that we can actually score goals because we're working on finishing on goal. As with all practice sessions, it's a great idea to start with an engaging arrival activity. This one is called Space Invaders. It works with either four or five players which means that it can be adapted depending on the numbers that you have in your group. Right, so a quick demo just for 15 seconds. Play, off you go. You can see that the whole group is active. This gives every player an opportunity to play and explore and to focus on two of the capabilities that we are zoning in on today, which are movement and scanning. I've got three, Liam comes out, somebody else goes in. Okay, play. Notice that all of the players are having to scan to identify where the spaces are. This includes the tagger. They all have to move across the area to score a point, or the tagger tagging on the shoulder also to score a point. To score in that game, you've got to have good movement. Before moving on in the session, it's important to summarize what we've been focusing on so far. We want to look a little bit more about, can we make our scanning wow? Now, do you know how I spell wow? Why do you scan? When do you scan? And how do you scan? W W H O W. The focus of our game, rather than simply saying we're working on finishing, giving the focus of the session the title Fox in the Box Finishing, because I want the boys to really work hard at scanning effectively and also to have clever movement that might fool or deceive the defenders. Adapt your goal as you're playing. Okay, off you go, play. Come on, so you can see the boys are now playing six versus six on a pitch with horizontal thirds. Consider with your game design, how can you adapt some simple rules? For example, the sideline ball can provide the players with the option of either passing the ball in or running the ball in. That we said in our little activity. Scanning, good boy, yeah? Okay, you saw something. Kai. What else? A further condition within the 6v6 game is to ask both teams to play out from the back. In doing so, there might be an opportunity for the defending team, in this case the Whites, to intercept. And we can see the player in white doing exactly that, showing good scanning skills and then excellent technique to loft the ball into the far corner. Relax there, well done. So, let's just think about this scanning first and foremost. So when we've got the ball in this position, yeah, naturally that's the easiest position in the world to scan. Where do I now need movement from my teammates? Where's the obvious place? So two blues, show me quickly. So fellas, there's our movement. Now obviously that movement, if we're making the ball smile, that could require me to say, go on Malik, go forward. When developing movement in this 6v6 game, there's a time and a place to help the players to understand how they work as units as opposed to individuals. Good boy. And then it requires you fellas to move. In this clip, we see blue number 10 showing effective scanning that enables him to move swiftly into space, send a long diagonal pass out wide right, and this culminates in a really good cross and almost an excellent finish on goal. Well done. All right. So in moving from the 6v6 game, into part activities, it's important to consolidate knowledge and maybe to layer in a few extra things for the players to think about. Here, I talk about the three A's in relation to their finishing on goal. If you scan and you can see there's a shot on, have a positive attitude, yeah? And that positive attitude will come from that awareness of what your options are. And can you also go with accuracy ahead of power? Our part activity will bring to life the benefits of effective whole session planning. Here we're going to make use of the attacking thirds by playing 4v2. This will happen for three minute intervals, which means the intensity will be high and the players will have an opportunity to create lots of finishing on goal. After three minutes, it's important to rotate the players so that two of the players from the attacking four move to the other end 
and become the defensive pair. Scan and have a little look. What do you see that's different with that other goal? Because we haven't got another keeper. We're going to get our goals in that goal by scoring into the bottom corners between the blue cones and the post or into top bins. Bottom corners, you can have two points. Top bins, you can actually have three points. OK, just come and have a watch then. Quick demo. Notice in this part activity, there's a real opportunity as a coach to be flexible with your numbers. So here, as opposed to playing 4v2, I'm looking to play three attackers versus two defenders plus a goalkeeper. Of course, this creates a higher level of challenge for the three attackers, but in view of the fact that we're working on effective scanning, movement and finishing on goal, this can only be a good thing. Notice in this first part activity that we get really good movement straight away. The two players without the ball move into wide areas and the one player with the ball travels forward. Although this doesn't culminate in a finish on goal, that's part of the session for the boys to play and explore and maybe next time look for a combination in and around the penalty area to finish on goal. Nice, well done. Notice that the target goal has been adapted without a goalkeeper, whereby the attacking players need to try and score in the bottom or top corners. Oh, you've got the setup. So this is our part activity. After a couple of three minute repetitions, a further recap helps you as the coach to gauge the player's understanding. This time around the specific techniques that they can use for finishing, with an emphasis being placed on the side for finish for accuracy. Technique. And what techniques have we got in the locker? Which one is going to give us accuracy? Side foot, yeah, okay. That's my challenge to all of you now. If you get a chance, can you finish with good accuracy with a side foot technique into corners? So boys, good scanning, good... Notice in both part activities that there are lots of opportunities through effective practice design for finishing on goal. We see great awareness and positive attitude with a long range strike. We see a side foot finish from close in and we see a drive from the edge of the penalty area. And even without a goalkeeper in, by setting target areas in the corners and the top corners, this allows the players to have what I would call repetition without repetition. Every finishing on goal opportunity is slightly different and builds upon the players' understanding of the best technique to use at the right time. In you come. We're going to now take that goal out of action. Right, final one from me. White, if you score in the zone, you get one point. As soon as you transition, you add on to your score. Blues, you're obviously trying to score in the net. Some bonus points for you. So if you just score a normal goal, one point. If you can actually get a goal that combines some sort of combination play, then we'll actually give you two points. A one-touch finish will give you a further point. Play! When moving into the final phase of 6v6 game, Look to be creative with the points that you allocate to different types of finish. Here we can see the blue team immediately motivated to attempt a first time finish on goal. This would have given them a bonus point. In this clip, we see a combination of the white players showing good scanning to then move effectively with the ball. And notice how white player number 10 shows excellent backwards movement to find space and then great technique to finish with the inside of the foot. In this last clip, you really do see the benefit of being flexible with your game design. We see both teams having the opportunity to attack into the main goal against the goalkeeper. On other occasions, they are trying to reach the end zone with the ball under control. Great play out. One final transition play. Good lad, well done. Great awareness. For all, next goal wins. Think about what we've been working on. Make the ball smile. Nice. Well a one-to-one -one intervention here by myself as coach would have enabled some question and answer to help blue player number 11 explore other techniques for finishing on goal. Boys, absolutely superb, well played. And we're calling that 
for all. As always, it's really important to highlight the positive aspect of player performance. And these boys really did demonstrate a good understanding and very good application of Fox in the box finishing.